as the role of a speaker. I come here to pay my respect to our master, Sri Ramakrishna, and my teacher, Holy Mother. I have said, as soon as I came here, that I find this center as my home, my spiritual home. When I was in New York in 1947, I missed something. But I coming here, I found the whole atmosphere was charged with spiritual vibration. The atmosphere of Belur Mat I felt here, because there's a worship of Sri Ramakrishna, there was daily meditation three times, and so on and so forth. I am very pleased to see that you have kept the fire burning. Not only <coughs> the fire is burning, but it is burning bri brighter. You have accepted the Swami, who took charge of the center under the direction of the Belur Mat, and you are cooperating with him. This gives us great pleasure and great satisfaction. But I am talking about spiritual life in, in the frame of reference of the Western civilization. Western civilization is predominantly dualistic. Two are the most important facets of, that, of this civilization. One is Judaism, which gave the religious aspiration to the Western man. And then the philosophy of the Greeks, especially Plato and Aristotle, play a very important part in shaping and molding this civilization. But when you study <clears throat> religion, you find that Judeo-Christian faith accepts the dualism between creature and creator. Even when a man attains salvation, and also salvation is not to be experienced in this life with this body. Salvation is a post-mortem experience. And even when a man is saved, there will remain this dualism between the individual soul and the universal soul. And this is what I call the theological stream, as we have got the two streams here. One is called the theological stream, and another I call the scientific stream. In the theological stream, we find St. Thomas Aquinas plays a very important part. What did he do? He accepted Aristotle, not so much of Plato. But Dr. Whitehead says, all the philosophers after Plato have written only footnotes to Plato. <laughs> and and uh, including Dr. Whitehead, who is one of the best. <laughs> one of the, uh, so to me, uh, father of philosophy, Western man, is Plato. And father of science is Aristotle. And therefore, Aristotle, makes this distinction between heaven and earth, uh, secular day and uh, called the Sabbath day. Aristotle was a scientist, I mentioned before. Uh, but what I want to say, uh, St. Thomas Aquinas accepted Bible and Aristotle. He wanted to harmonize these two. But uh, to my mind, this theological stream and also this scientific stream will not meet. There are two readings of, of the absolute by the dialectic of the intellect. And therefore I will uh, say this, that Advaita, or called non-dualism, will be able to synthesize these two aspirations of the Western man. One, the scientific stream tells you, reason, accept nothing without question, and experiment and experience. And the theological stream have faith, ask no question, but believe. But if we accept only theology, or accept only science, what will we will be called, will be satisfied with the world of becoming, with the world of change, the world of relativity, the world of time, space, and causation. And therefore, a true Vedantist is one who thinks that this world is Maya. Maya, I do not say it is illusion. Shat asat anirbhachanyam. It exists. 
when we are in the state of dream, it does not exist when it transcends. So our view is a transcendental experience, which I interpret as a revelation. And in order to attain that, we have to ask ourselves, are we qualified for it? We must never bring down the ideal. We must raise ourselves to the ideal. To bring down the ideal and say, world is beautiful, world is fine, it means romanticism. World is maya, that means it is a mere appearance. And if you cling to the world of time, you, you will have to take accept that time will kill you. And what our aspiration is jiban mukti, not salvation. Why? Because our real nature is faith. And in order to understand that, we have to think of the apparent self of man which belongs to the world of time space. But the real self of man is the witness consciousness, the spectator of time and existence, which Pythagoras said after going to India uh, and studying the, uh, we call the Shankar philosophy. So whatever we, it may be, we are to accept this relative world, with, but our goal is to transcend. And so I have to say one question. This distinction between man and woman, and the women have no right to become what you call, uh, perform the rituals, which the Catholic Church says they are the sacraments. In every convent there must be a priest who is permitted to perform these rituals, and rituals must be uh, the way to realize the truth. But I have to think of the, our order, which has given equal right to women. I know the, the Sharala Devi who became Bharati Prana, who, give, who used to give initiation, used to give Brahmacharya, used to give sannyas. This is a parallel organization. This is a new theme in the world history. This is a new theme in world literature, not even in Buddhism, nor in other faiths of the world. So this Vedanta movement in the West has to perform nothing miracle but one simple thing, to stimulate the thinking power, to grasp wh what we are, wh how the world is moving, and how uh, to adjust ourselves to time, place, and circumstances. That is why I have to say that our good friends are, the are not so much the theologians, but the scientists. <laughs> uh, what I say that, uh, because uh, theology cannot be changed uh, because there, there will be difficulty in that. Uh, one Shardin wanted to explain the original sin, uh, the spirit involved in matter. And the hierarchy of church says you have no business to enter into the field of religion. It's a matter of faith. Faith in supernatural. And church is the embodiment of the supernatural, the mystic body of Christ. But to us, all the Vedas, Traiguna Vishya Veda, Nistraiguna Bhavarjana, well, Lord Jira, Sri Krishna said the Gita, all the Vedas, all the scriptures belong to the world of time, world of becoming. You have to transcend time, transcend history, transcend theology, transcend science. That I call what, what you call Paravidya. It is a personal experience. When you reach the goal of perfection, you have no doubt, you have no fear, you have no agony. You have no distress, you have no limitations. So I will, I will say, the, by reading Christ, I have understood that Christ wanted his disciples, his followers, to lift their consciousness from the intellectual plane to the spiritual plane. In the intellectual plane, we are bound to see distinction, difference, duality, and multiplicity of the world. At least you have to make this distinction between the speaker and the audience. You have to make a distinction between subject and the object. You have to make a distinction between drik and drisha. That means seer and the seen. Therefore, I have to say, to purify the intellect and transcend intellect. But Mr. Descartes, the father of modern uh, called philosophy, which I studied in St. Paul's Cathedral Mission College, would tell me, cogito argu sum. I doubt, therefore I think. I think, therefore I exist. If 
Mr. Decati would have come now, as I have said, Mr. Decati would have put the cart before the horse. <laughs> <laughs> now, I see, the, how, 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 how is he? Because we do not think first, we exist. Then we connect ourselves, attach ourselves with the mind, and the mind creates doubt. But it is better to be a doubting Thomas than to be a fool without any brain. <laughs> So we, we have to doubt. Swami Vivekananda doubted the experience of Sri Ramakrishna. And Sri Ramakrishna said, test me as a money changer, test his coin. Don't accept because I have said. And when Swami Vivekananda had that experience, then he bowed down in reference to his guru and please help me to reach the goal of perfection. And Sri Vivekananda came not as just as a lecturer, he came as a messenger of Sri Ramakrishna to speak to the West. Not Sri Ramakrishna, but Sri Ramakrishna is the principle. He is the principle of eternal truth, beauty and goodness. He is the principle of Advaita, principle of pure consciousness, principle of pure life. And so I have to, as I have said, the, the uh, scientists are our good friends. How I have to explain to you that? First, the classical science was governed by the theory of gravitation by Newton. And Aristotle and other theologians accepted that theory, and therefore time and space were considered to be absolute. But it is Einstein who changed the spectrum of the scientific viewpoint. And we find that time is relative and space is also relative. And this is exactly what Shankaracharya says, Shatashat Anirbhacharya. For in illumination, the world is real. I am real to you, you are real to me. Because it is, I see you. For this, this Parukshara Bhati, that is called indirect experience. But direct experience is, um, I am, that I am. I am, that is the direct experience. You can never deny the denier. You may deny everything, but you cannot deny the existence of the denier. But you are superimposing on your real self all the, call the uh, attributes and qualities of non-self. And the body is a non-self because it does not last. What is the uh, definition of truth? As Christ said, you shall know the truth and truth shall make you free. The Western man accepts a pragmatic view of truth, that which works, that brings money that brings comfort, that brings energy. See, uh, you get energy by, from sunshine, that, or you try to uh, get from, uh, say, from the ocean, you uh, try to get the oil, all that. Uh, so it reminds me of an instance uh, in Moses' life. Uh, Moses wanted to have the promised land, but he, for 40 years he walked and came to, to the promised land called Jerusalem. But uh, modern Jews will think you have stopped at Saudi Arabia. <laughs> <laughs> For 40 years. <laughs> anyway, that which works, the pragmatic, this is uh, William James speaks about that, that which helps humankind, you see. Then there is another view of truth which is called the correspondence, this is photography. Yes. You, there is a, <coughs> the reality is there, outside, you see. That is, the Western man thinks the, uh, uh, my equation, if I say, reality equal to N plus mind, as comprehended with my reality, outside, nature. But the Hindu view, or the Vedantic view, reality equal to M, not comprehended mind, transcending mind, or the die, because it is the intellect which has this limitation, the limitation of seeing through a glass darkly and not face to face, as St. Paul says. Intellect brings these three categories. Time, it must be an event in time. It must be an object in space, and it must be cause. Yes. Take, for example, the cause of your coming. Oh, Swami has come from Portland. Oh, he has seen oh, Holy Mother. Probably he will be a good speaker. He may not be. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
but anyway, whatever maybe. Um, uh, uh, what I want to say, the uh, uh, time-space continuum, this is the view of, of the science. And Einstein tried to, in his last days, to have what we call the general force, from which all the forces have come, you see. That general force of Einstein, um, uh, I will speak about later, this, the Divine Mother, the Shakti, the Shakti. It's not unconscious, it must be conscious force. But what I'm ta going to talk to you, that uh, this idea of time and space to be real, I will accept as relative real, it is not absolute. Because when you go into a, called the transcendental state of consciousness called Samadhi, you go beyond time, you see. As Swamiji experienced that, nahi shurja, nahi jyoti, nahi shashanga, sun has disappeared, moon has disappeared, avang manusha gocharam, beyond mind, beyond thought, beyond speech, boje pran, boje jar. He alone knows, he has experienced it in the very depth of his heart, in the very core of his true self. So this is the reason why I have said that this opera vidya, because you see the, a, a student went to the teacher, kusminu bhago vigyate sarvamidam vigyatam bhavati. Please tell me that, by knowing which everything in this universe will be known. And then, devidde veditebbe. There are two kinds of knowledge, opera and para. The knowledge of the, obje of the object will come under the category of lower knowledge. But knowledge of the subject, the real subject, which I mentioned as nitta shuddha buddha mukta. It is eternal, it is pure, it is free, and it is illumined. It is that self. So a, an avatar comes to tell us which you have forgotten. Really, the world of Maya is something like a kind of self-forgetfulness. We forget our true self and identify ourselves with our psychophysical personality. But the word personality comes from the Greek word called person, I mean mask. You have to tear off the mask. Then alone you, you know the essence, the spirit. And that is the religion which Christ preached when he spoke to the Samaritan woman. Uh, not a day like this, it was a very sunny day. <laughs> a very sunny day and a very hot, a very hot day. Christ was very thirsty. And he went in such a water. Somebody told him there is a beautiful well and water is very fresh, clean and clear. Uh, you please go there. So he went. And he found a Samaritan woman drawing water from the well. Would you kindly give me some water? I shall be very thankful to you. But the Samaritan woman saw his face, uh, his beard, and uh, some other things. He recognized. He recognized that. He recognized that. Uh, I say put it. He recognized that he was a high class Jew, high class Jew. And Samaritans are something like non Brahmins. You see, they are not Brahmins, as Boston people think they are Brahmins. Or <laughs> That is the reason why one of your devotees, that is the reason why one of your devotees was not satisfied. I must not make any about this, I just have to, even between us. Uh, you have such a beautiful ocean, and then, uh, but Boston, going to Portland. How I like to go to Boston. Yes. Yeah. But Tea Party, always remember, Boston Tea Party. Uh, uh, so anyway, what, what I'm going to say. Uh, uh, he said, he saw the high-class Jew, you see. Yeah. Uh, although Christ did not speak Hebrew, he spoke the Aramaic. And therefore, when he says Father, or Father in heaven, he says Abba. In Aramaic, the word is Abba, you see. So anyway, uh, would you kind of, if she refused. Then Christ said to, him, to her, uh, the, the water that will give a man drinks, he or she will be thirsty again. But if you give me water, I will give another kind of water. It will be like a well springing into eternal life. Then he made a little forecast about his past and all that. And then you talk like a big rabbi, a great teacher, a teacher. What is your concept of God? Then Christ said, God is not in the hills of Samaria that the Samaritans worship. God is not in the temple of Jerusalem that the Jewish people worship. God is a spirit. They who worship God must worship in spirit and in truth. God is a spirit. When you think God is a spirit, and now I have to bring the Shankar philosophy here, because Shankar is very rational. 
It has two concepts. One is called Purusha and Prakriti. Purusha means the spirit is perfect. There is no trace of imperfection because it is infinite. It is, and Prakriti evolves, you see. It is, all evolutions come from Prakriti. And Prakriti is constituted of the three gunas, Sattva, Rajas, and Tamas. And even when we go to the, uh, the highest point of Prakriti, still we are not future trends in Prakriti. Or the Vedantists accept Prakriti as Maya. You see. Now, all evolutions, we do not accept creation out of nothing. We accept evolution. But we are also we give to this uh, scientist another correlative, which is called involution. Evolution of nature is for the manifestation of the spirit, which is eternally perfect. And so we can never attain perfection as long we live in the world of becoming, in the world of prakriti. So when Christ said the God is spirit, I, I will interpret that spirit is indivisible because it is a simple unit. It cannot be divided. All compounded things can be divided, can, can undergo change. Some people have asked me this question, you see, that how, how did you survive St. Helens? Because St. Helens was not doing uh, its job properly. <laughs> <laughs> if he had done his job properly, it would have been like Mount Vesuvius. The first volcanic eruption was as strong as uh, uh, called the uh, uh, Ves uh, Vesuvius, eruption of Vesuvius, Mount Vesuvius. But repeated, repeated eruptions, you see. The, but anyway, this world will one day disappear. When we say disappear, it goes back to Prakriti. It, because anything is a product of a cause will undergo change. And therefore, that is the reason we do not think that we are born, we, we are unborn. The great souls teach us that fact. Mahabharata Maharaj was asked, Maharaj, uh, we want to celebrate your birthday. Would you kindly tell us? Mahabharata Maharaj said, coming to Sri Ramakrishna, I have realized I am unborn. So what is the use of celebrating birthday? But the, the devotees and disciples are very clever. <laughs> <laughs> they got the information from his sister who was living in, uh, living in uh, Benares, you see, living in Benares. Uh, even Holy Mother's birthday. His mother was not interested. Then Shami Shalva one day approached with uh, folded palms. Mother had so many devotees want to celebrate your birthday. Uh, and Shami Shalva knew the actual birthday, mother permitted. In our monastery, you celebrate the birthday of the direct disciples of the Master. So anyway, the point is, Mahapurusha Maharaj when gave sannyas, will say, I have given you name, your name has changed, but go beyond name and form. That means Atma Jnana. You have come here to realize that. And so you see, see if, you can, if you think in the Last Supper, Virgin Mary was not invited, and therefore, you see, uh, <laughs> we have no right to perform these rituals. She was praying, uh, and this idea of man and woman, we must transcend. This belongs to the world of Maya. And that is the reason, you see, I, when I take our vow, we do not say that I am this or that. You see, I am to always think of my ideal. Ajasa, non-causality. So uh, that is the reason why I say that uh, first we have to know time and space to be relative. You see. Our view is to when you transcend time by reaching the transcendental state of consciousness which we call samadhi, then we become illumined. So this picture of Sri Ramakrishna was taken in that state of consciousness. He, he was absolutely unconscious. A photographer came and found this man was living almost dead. He didn't know and left it. Then one of the devotees took the snapshot and we got the first picture. And Sri Ramakrishna one day uh, put some flowers. Then Holy Mother was laughing. Yeah, please do not laugh. This picture will be worshipped in many homes, hundreds of homes. When I came to this country, I saw one devotee. You see, I saw him as Sri Ramakrishna, Holy Mother. I thought within myself, where is Kamatukur and where is Maryland? Yeah. And who preached? It was not any political power behind. Christianity spread not account of the merit of Christianity. It spread on account of Constantine, when it made the, the, uh, the religion of the Roman Empire. But original Christianity was mystical, was transcendental, and was non-dualistic. 
Otherwise, Christ would not have said, I and my father one. So here we, I, I come to uh, uh, this second phase of scientific development in the West. Even <clears throat> Einstein's theory of relativity, I said, when you are in the high school, you accept called law of gravitation. When you go up to the college course, you have to, as it were, at least intellectually, you have to accept all the law of relativity. But when you go to postgraduate class, you think of called Max Planck's quantum theory and also Heisenberg theory of indeterminism. When I speak about that, I think that the Western civilization, the boat of Westerns has sprung a leak. <laughs> No, let me explain to you, it is not any criticism. It is bound to be, if you are, in, intellect becomes the Supreme Court of Appeal, bound to have this leak. Leak means paradoxes. I'm not using leak uh, like uh, you have got this uh, called Swiss cheese. <laughs> you have got lots of holes. <laughs> I'm not using that sense. I'm using paradoxes come, you see. Uh, it comes within Maya, you see. It is relative. Therefore, we do not think that good is absolute or uh, uh, evil is absolute. We say it's a relative good, relative. We say marriage is good for some. Marriage is not, would not be good for a person who ha has joined a monastery. A priest should not think of marriage. It is a, a contradiction in terms. He should not have accepted this vow of renunciation. But real renunciation does not mean simply uh, uh, accepting an order. Real renunciation is deification of the world. First, you have made a distinction that I and the world are different. I have to, it is due to ignorance, abhidya, and only vidya, knowledge. I and the world are one. The Atma, you see the oneness by transcending the intellect. But what I was going to say, uh, Max Planck had brought in the picture, you see. Uh, you, you think scientists used to think that we are observers, but it is Max Planck's quantum theory, we are participators. Exactly that Shankar philosophy tells us that what we know is X plus mind about the wall. Similarly, X plus this personality. So you tear off the personality, then you go into the heart of the reality. That is your real self. So in this connection, I have to tell a story. It's connected with Maharaj. One time, Shami Brahmanuji Maharaj uh, asked me to bring some they call lodgings, but here they call candies. But I said, I, I, I said how, how much, I see. Maharaj said, get a, a pound or something. So when you come next time. So I brought these lodgings, candies, that uh, sometimes you call lifesavers. <laughs> but, uh, but, but I tell you, the dentist will not think that way. <laughs> then um, I came to Balaram Bush's house. Then the, the Shevak attendant said, Maharaj uh, 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 will not receive any visitor. But Maharaj heard that from within. Call that boy. I, I took the candies, package of candies and presented to Maharaj. Then sit down. Then Maharaj asked his attendant to bring the children uh, the grandchildren of Balram Bosch, Ram Babu's children, uh, little children. So, uh, as, as soon as they came, opened the door, they are coming through the door, Maharaj put a mask of a tiger. There is something in the Bible, I did not say that. He, he put a tiger. And the children, th three children, they uh, afraid, ran away. <laughs> ran away. He said, Mommy, 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 tiger. Uh, then, uh, then uh, Maharaj again asked them when they were in the inner apartment again called them. They came. Then, they, then again he put on the tiger. They were actually about to go. Then Maharaj stopped, asked the uh, Shiva attendant to uh, hold, them, hold them. And then took off. Oh Maharaj, you are a great tease. <laughs> and he gave these candies. Similarly, we do not know that it is the Lord who has taken my form, your form. All this for, and Illumin soul sees that. And that is why Sri Ramakrishna would see uh, in Golapma, in Joginma, the divine Ananda In Balaram Vashar's house, he went and said, come along, come along with me. Uh, and uh, sit in the boat. And uh, yeah. And Golapma, 
he did not know where, where, uh, uh, whether he would get food there and all that. But then he went away. You see, it is something like the, the fruit of Krishna. The, the, when this Krishna fruit, when the Lord calls us, we cannot think of any other thing. We have to follow. So anyway, the point that I want to speak, this Advaita first. Again, second concept that I want to bring to you, the concept of Guru. Because all mystic religions, all transcendent religions, the teacher plays a very important part. It is something like a demonstrator. It is something like an exemplar. It is something like uh, called the embodiment of the Shastras, Shastra Murti. And he is also a method. And he is also the, the most powerful person to draw the heart of his students, like a magnet. And so we, we find the, the, the called Guru Shakti, see, because you cannot achieve anything unless you have power. The first power will come to us from the Guru, the transmitter of power, Guru Shakti. And he, when he becomes illumined, then alone he has that power. Then he identifies himself with the universal consciousness. Uh, and that is what Swami Shardanda wrote in his book called Bharati Shakti Puja. Worship of Shakti as Divine Mother in India. There it is the Guru Shakti. You find in the, in the days of the Upanishads, uh, there is no temple, no uh, deity. But I believe they worshipped the Guru as a kind of symbol and expression of the holy of the holies. Th that is the reason in Upanishad, the Tasmad, Guru Mavigachet, Samitpani, with the fuel in hand. That means it's a symbol of humility. I have come to learn. I have come to learn. And the Guru, these are the qualifications. Sotriya, he must know the essence of the scripture. Or Brijina, he must live a sinless life. Or Kamhata, he will not have any ulterior motive behind to swell the number of disciples. Not for that. It is Ahetuka Dunashamdu. He does act of compassion. And then Brahmavit, Noara Brahman. So I have, in my life, I can say, uh, I did not know that I saw the, the, the Divine Mother in flesh and blood. I saw only the human aspect. The recognition came only through the commentator, Swami Shardananda. When I was writing letters, he was giving some kind of directions, method, or called steps, first, second, third. I said to Swamiji, Swami Shardananda Ji, that you see, Holy Mother has not given any method, he has given just simple instruction, would you kindly uh, add something? Then he said, you are, you are the greatest fool. <laughs> I did not say, one young man came, he said, Maharaj said, you are a fool. He said, not Maharaj, I am a MA of the Calcutta University. <laughs> <laughs> Maharaj said, fine, and he didn't stay. That young man came and talked, yes, as in the, in the Trubuko, when I was there, one young man came from the East. The heart of the Tabutu is there. He will not do any work. He will not go to the shrine and all that. What will you be writing a book? I said, what will be the title of your book? So how to become a saint? So why do you, I said, why don't, you, why don't you become a saint first and write? <laughs> so, so here I, I call it the Guru Shakta. The first power is the power comes to this is the greatest asset. When Shankaracharya says, Manushuttam, Mamukshuttam, Mahapurusha Shankaracharya, that he must be uh, called, a, uh, feel, feel proud to be a man, a manliness. Manushuttam, Mamukshuttam, burning desire for freedom. And then he's called Mahapurusha Shankaracharya. You may interpret means uh, that association with the illumined soul, but I will not associate, uh, uh, interpret that way. I will, as he said, taking instruction from a teacher who will be able to help him. So Mahapurusha Shankstra, therefore I, uh, the, but oh, oh, the West has accepted church to be the Guru. The, therefore you say, you see, I belong to the Episcopal Church. Uh, these are the things, the baptism by immersion. Or I belong to the, the Catholic Church. There I, I have the rituals, they say, I have to go for confession. I have to uh, ask forgiveness for sins and all that. But here our is realization. Religion is realization, and therefore Guru is a bridge between man and God. He transmits power and spirituality. So, we, as I have said, Swami Sharada, 
said to me that what Holy Mother has done for you, you cling to the mantra and think of her and all the rest will be added unto you, as, as Christ says. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness, and everything else will be added unto you. Therefore you cling to this mantra, that I call mantra shakti, the power of the mantra, which is charged with power. And in, you read in the... <coughs> is my time on? No, no. That is best time. <laughs> uh, so mantra, the, the first is mantra, you have to repeat the mantra. Oh, and, Okay. Now mantra, this is the thing. You have to, the, what, you, so you change the oh, Guru is not here now, his physical era. He lives in the mantra. It's called Ishta Mantra. And so I you will find Ishta Mantra when I use the word chosen ideal. I will, I have spoken about little that. I will uh, talk in a little different way. Now our Guru is Sri Ramakrishna. And Holy Mother is the Ishta. Because the Ishta, is, is, the, is the Shakti. Because it is a Shakti, it, it is a, is aspect of the Divine Mother. And that is the reason why when we meditate on Sri Ramakrishna, we meditate on the head and the istam in the heart. And the purpose, Guru will merge in the istam. Or another view is istam will merge in the Guru. They are one. And the disciple also will merge. This is Advaita. And it will take time. And, but we are very impatient, you see. Therefore, it is called sadhana. You have to, sadhana means have faith in the mantra, have faith in the guru, and practice renunciation and meditation. These are the one, renunciation is called this negative method, and positive method is called meditation. But meditation word is symbolic. You withdraw the mind from the periphery and fasten it to the center. Because in the center, the kingdom of heaven, the real self, it abides. And uh, your mind will be the reflector of the reality when it is purified. You see, as in Palamar Observatory, there is a telescope. It took about 18 years to perfect it. But I hear there is another telescope in Australia or someplace. It's more powerful than that. But I'm satisfied with the uh, 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 <laughs> California, <laughs> that telescope. Uh, so that telescope it took 18 years to perfect it flawless, without any speck of dust, and kept in, a, in the right position. Similarly, mind must be very sattvic. Then mind will be the reflector of the reality. And through this japa, uh, repeating the name and meditating on the form, visualizing the form of the chosen ideal in the heart, uh, gradually will be drawn to the magnet when the worldly shankaras are liquidated. And that is what the, the, the great teacher, Sanat Kumar, said to his disciple Narada. Let's see. Ahara shuddhu shatta shuddhi. When your thoughts are pure, the mind stuff will be pure. When the mind stuff is pure, there will be a constant and unbroken remembrance of God. Then you will have no set time for meditation. Even when you are doing work, you are feeling the presence. You are, as you and I, I was, one time I wanted to read the Shastras in Benares. Then Shami Sharanamda wanted me. Uh, but I said, no, I want to uh, read the Shastras. I won't get in Pandits in Calcutta. Then one Swami told me that you will get better benefit by removing the dust from the shoes of Sharanamda than becoming a Pandit in Benares <laughs> and, <laughs> and uh, shower some words there. You see. So anyway, yeah, it is a great privilege to serve an illusion so Tadvidhi Pranibhate no Pariprasne no Shevat. Know the ultimate truth. So Pariprasna questioning, Pranibhate no. So he a prostration. Then comes Pariprasna as questions and Sheva service. So I had to go up. I used to, uh, when I used to serve Swami Shardaranda, I used to feel like I was serving Swami uh, Ramakrishna. And, uh, one day, uh, one of the late disciples of Holy Mother said, Mother, I want to serve you. Then, um, his name is Chandra, Chandra Mandatta. He told me, he, he was working with me, he was back, things and all that. Then Mother said, no, uh, no, my child, Sharla will do that. Uh, uh, you better go and massage the feet of Swami Sharla, and you will get Brahmagyana. Uh, 
So I thought within myself, why do I miss this opportunity? <laughs> uh, so anyway, this uh, uh, kind of faith, but we have to start our spiritual life with faith. It may be an imagination, but today's imagination will be tomorrow's realization. You see, any moment uh, that may come, but we must be ready. And that is the reason why this sadhana shakti, the power comes from sadhana. That means practice of the presence of God, practice of unbroken remembrance. While you are walking, while you are worshipping, while you are uh, packing books or doing any kind of garden work, you see. This will lead to a state of consciousness which uh, Shankaracharya called mumukshatta, burning desire for freedom. But I will uh, use it in a different context. I will use uh, that word called bakulata, longing for the vision of God. You chant want. It is my very choitan, you see. Choitan, you see, a moment appears to be an age. Uh, this comes in Bhagavatam, when the gopis of Vrindavan felt the pang of separation for Sri Krishna. Uh, they sang the song of song. Truti Jugayate Tam Apashatam Chakshusha Prabrishaitam Shunnaitam Jagat Sharvam Govinda Virahenami. A truti means a moment appears to be an age. Chakshu of tears are coming down from the cheeks without any let and hindrance. The whole world seems to be empty and void because the Lord of my heart has not come. I felt that kind of thing when Shami on the passed away. You see, he, he had apoplexy on 6th of August, what we call stroke. He could not speak, but he had inner consciousness. And uh, uh, on this Krishnashtami, Janmashtami day, uh, 18th of August, you see, well, we chanted the name Hari Om Ramakrishna, Hari Om Ramakrishna, or oh, Vidya Jakhayai, you see. Uh, yeah, that, uh, there I see Maharaj also liked that song, you see. Uh, sh I mean, sh sh Sharananda had the vision of uh, Thakur, Sri Ramakrishna, on his way. He told us when he was going to um, Puri, the Sakshikupa, their master, gave me the darshan. So there is, it is called Biraha, separation from the Lord. Uh, in, the, in Christian mysticism, it is called the dark night of the soul, the dark night. Yes. Swami Sharananda advised me that, you see, even in dark night, you should cling to the Lord. It is something like a passing through a tunnel. But in America coming, I say all tunnels are well lit. <laughs> uh, but not uh, so previously. The all tunnels were dark. So you have, every person would have to pass through that. But it is a very auspicious moment when you long for the vision of God. St. Augustine uh, longed for that vision, but he was very sincere. He said, not yet, not yet. <laughs> not, I'm not ready. Make me pure, make me illumined, but not yet. But, uh, uh, but later, you see, he lived this life, monastic life. And he uh, used to pray uh, every day, you see. Uh, then a time came, you see, Lord, as it were, telling him, tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Then he sent, sent Daga, why tomorrow, why tomorrow, why not today, why not today, why not now? So, you see, this is the way, this moment, this is called the uh, intense yearning, tibra veganam asana. When you have that intense yearning, then the Lord will appear. And that appearance of the Lord, according to, it is not uh, imagination of the mind, it is real. It is uh, uh, call it communion or call it shavikalpa samadhi. Shadhukanam unukhartam brahmano rupakalpana. You see, it is out of grace the infinite Brahman takes a form. You see. Uh, uh, so I, it reminds me of a, a one little girl, a Sunday school girl. Ask me this question, Swami. I saw in the television the Moses talked to God. Have you seen God? Well, I said I have seen somebody who has seen God, or who has really God himself, Holy Mother. But in this context, I have, I have to say, television and God vision are two different things. <laughs> <laughs> if you see God in television, <laughs> it will be an object, you see. He is the eternal subject. And also, method is different. In television, you see only appearance, Nama Rupa, Maya. 
uh, but in God vision, you see, the, the, only the veil is lifted between man and God. There is a veil, and that is the reason you have to through our sadhanas we have to make a little hole. You see, a holy man has made some hole uh, on the screen of Maya, and the illumined soul, the hole and the screen are one, no difference at all. You see, I and my father are one. So we, we find that when Shami Sharanda passed away, put his body, uh, remained in it. When I came to, to uh, Udbodhan, I felt uh, everything is empty. It's shunnata. I became a Buddhist as it were. Shunnata. Everything is shunnam. You see. But I thought within myself, I make it purnam. So I, Shami Sharanda wanted to go to Benares. I shall go to Benares and practice tapas. Uh, uh, so, although I have, I cannot say that I have reached the goal, but I uh, have uh, uh, at least realized the beauty of this kind of life. I will never exchange for anything else in this world. And, uh, and I, it is, I like the, 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 the monastic members are very close to us. But uh, that does, I do not say that uh, uh, I, uh, devotees I will not uh, uh, so much appreciate. I will appreciate also. But we becoming monks, we like these people who will be few in number but they will be the pillars of our spiritual organization. So what I only can say, I commend yourself to the care of Mother who has blessed me, to bless you all and enlighten your heart and give you peace, freedom and enlightenment. Because the Divine Mother is an embodiment of two things, wisdom and also compassion. Is Mahavidya and Mahakuruna. As for example, uh, one of our great swamis, he became, he was meditating uh, for 20 hours or something. Uh, and he, he had kind of called brain phobia. Maharaj called him. And uh, Western medicine, Ayurvedic medicine, home with everything exhausted. Then some senior swami said, Why don't you go to mother? She is your uh, guru. You tell her your difficulty. Then he went, and uh, mother asked, my child, why do you meditate? Why do you meditate? He was saying, the Shastra, I have not instructed you that way. You meditate in the heart. And he followed master, mother's instruction, everything left. And he said, because I had a Sadguru, I had a, an illumined guru, a guru who, who can diagnose the disease and could give real cure, I, I was saved. A great Swami. Similarly, it is the guru. And Guru, as I've said, does not die. He lives in the mantra. And our view is to become mantra chaitanya. We'll become conscious. And that is the reason why I think I have touched the Holy Mother's feet. Is the Maha Vidya and also Maha Karuna. Because I, I, I was not really uh, thinking in terms of uh, initiation when I left my uh, dormitory. It was something which you call uh, a grace. So in our spiritual life, there will be ascent of man, we call sadhana. And also, there is descent of God, which I call grace. Jame vaishabhruti tena labhyam. He who the Lord chooses will be able to realize the goal. Uh, Christ one time said, uh, you see, you have not chosen me, I have chosen thee. And so I also feel that way, that I, I was not ready. But Holy Mother, out of His grace, out of her grace, uh, at least planted the seed of spiritual awakening. And then through her mukshuddhara uh, kapata pata You see, she, uh, uh, in, the, in our monastery, you see a picture of holy mother, I call Annapurna. You see, her bhandar is always full. Not only material food, but spiritual food. And so, when I was in Benares, I used to go to Annapurna's mandir the temple, and I used to chant. Mukshaddara kapata pata nikari, kashi pada dhishari, vikshang dehi kripava manukari, mata annapurnashari. Well, Divine Mother, I beg of you. So vikshang means I humbly beg of you. But Mukshaddara, you hold the key, you hold the key with your hand and open the door to illumination. Muksha, that is called liberation, jivan mukti. Mokshuddhara kapata pata kashi pura adhishwari. You are the presiding deity of kashi. Kapata adhishwari, you see. But, Dikshang, they give me this, out of grace. 
So no illumined soul will say that I have realized the goal by my effort. It is grace. But both are necessary. If you are to walk ten steps, God will walk a hundred steps. And so what will happen to them? Then uh, uh, this uh, uh, man of illumination, Basham Tabat Lokitam Chata Shankaracharyas, Viveka Churamu, they like the spring always bring hope, cheer, joy, and also the light of illumination always in their hearts. And so that is the reason why uh, <laughs> I think that it is not easy to realize God, but it is not also difficult. <laughs> it's not difficult. Only you have to know that you have a mother. That is only what I said. You have to know that you have a mother who will look after you. And that is also the same thing you find in the, the return of the prodigal. You see? The prodigal return. And then the, 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 the boy said that I am with you always and you don't give me a fist. But this boy went away and you are giving fist, you see. It is that, you see. Therefore, the Guru Shakti is always trying to help us, whether we know it or not. If, eh? uh, therefore, what I will say that Sri Ramakrishna is a living presence for, as Shiva, and Holy Mother is the Divine Mother. And through their grace, the grace of the Master with Shiva, they have the symbol of Absolute, and Mother, the symbol of Mahashakti and Mahakuruna, great power and great compassion, we will be able to realize the goal. And that is the reason I say, I commend you all to the care of Divine Mother. May a vessel of bliss be installed in your heart. Anandi Purna, but Mother herself, she said, that you, you are living in Dakshinasya, uh, you have no uh, comfort, uh, you are so sad. No, 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 why, why you say I am sad? I am sad. Anandi Purna Ghat. Anandi, a vessel of bliss is installed in my heart. You see, the Marwadis will come and say, oh, you are like a Sita, you see, suffering, all suffering. No, Mother said, you see, on the other hand, Mother said, a vessel of bliss is installed in my heart. I am not sad in, in, even a single moment. That is what the Vedanta, especially the Daitya Upanishads, Ananda Deva Kholi Bhuta Nijayanti. From an illumined soul, the whole world is filled with bliss, and from bliss it comes, it bliss it exists, and finally to the, that same in, immortal bliss called Brahmananda, that the individual soul realizes, losing its few, spurious individuality, and realizes, realizing his pure, stainless individuality, which is essentially pure, stainless and divine. Yang Brahma Barunendra Rudra Maruta Stunanti Dibai Stabai Bedai Sangava Dakrama Upanishadai Rikayanti Yang Samagaha Dhyana Vastita Tadgate Namanasa Pashanti Yang Yoginaha Jasyantam Nabidhu Sura Suragana Deva Yotashmai Namaha Our salutations to him who is the truth of life and existence, and whom the sages call by various names. Our salutations to him whose glory is sung in sacred hymns of the various scriptures of the world, but whose limitless and infinite grandeur no mortal mind can comprehend. Our salutations to him whom the devotees meditate in the shrine of their hearts and realize his ineffable presence in their deepest contemplation. May he illumine our understanding and prompt our minds to the path of truth and righteousness. May he reveal himself unto our souls and dispel the gloom of illusion, fear, doubt, and darkness. Peace be unto earth, peace be unto heaven, peace be unto land, peace be unto waters, peace be unto plants, peace be unto animals, peace be unto gods, peace be unto nations, peace be unto races, peace be unto me, peace be unto all, peace be unto peace. Om peace, peace, peace.